Today, I'm at Dulwich Picture Gallery, ahead of their big exhibition, Rembrandt's Light, to celebrate the 350th anniversary of Rembrandt's death. This gallery is rather special because it was the first purpose-built art gallery in the world to open to the public back at the very beginning of the 19th century. One of the first paintings to be given to the gallery by its founder, and probably the most famous in its collection today, is by Rembrandt, Girl at a Window. I'm going to take a closer look at this with Jennifer Scott, director of the gallery, who's going to tell me the story behind this wonderful place and explain what inspired this exhibition. This must be one of your real stars, this one. It is. Yeah. We have a nickname for this painting. Oh, yeah. We call it the Mona Lisa of London. Because we think that yeah. anybody who comes to London cannot miss out on seeing this painting. Yes. It's one of our absolute stars at Dulwich Picture Gallery. I can imagine. And actually it's got that very same quality where those eyes look right at you and sort of follow yes. you around, don't yes. they? Yes. She doesn't let you ignore her. So as you no. walk past this painting, you are stopped in your tracks. And it's the sort of painting that works on so many different levels. You actually have to slow down and take some time and allow Rembrandt to work on you. It's an absolutely magnificent work of art. And how did it come to be here? Well, this is one of the world's great art collections that was actually built up for the King of Poland. So there were two art dealers working in London who were asked to build up a royal collection from scratch for Poland. But by the time they pulled it together, the King of Poland was deposed. And so they didn't have uh, somebody to take the collection. So oh my goodness, <laughs> so they were left with this wonderful collection of paintings. <laughs> yes, absolute world-class <laughs> European paintings on their hands. So they went to Russia and said, well, should we actually build a national collection in Russia? And they came to the British government and said, should we have a national gallery? Because if we do, we've got the startings of it here. And um, the British government and the Russian government said no. So Noel Desenfon and Francis Bourgeois were still stuck with these fantastic paintings and they thought about Dulwich, which was a place that they had no personal connection with, but the school, Dulwich College, here in South East London, had a really good early British art collection, the collection of the actor Edward Alling. And so it was the beginnings of a great collection in a setting that's very close to central London, but also has a sort of pastoral beauty. The Girl at a Window really, really stands out. She is the painting that when people think of this collection, they think of her. She's our poster girl. Yeah. And this was created during what we would call Rembrandt's middle period. So for 19 years, he lived in a really large house in Amsterdam. He completely overstretched himself to buy this house. He couldn't afford it, but he wanted it. And I think he wanted it because it had perfect windows. Huge north-facing windows with light that he could manipulate to teach, to paint, to contemplate that light. Mm -hmm. And light is everything with Rembrandt. He tells his stories through light. And for me, there's one particular flash of light in this painting. There's one little white highlight on the tip of her nose. The tip of the nose, yes, that one. And then the tiny bit on the forehead as well. But it really is the little dot on the nose, isn't it? Could it could even be the last thing that it's he ever painted. Almost it. the central point mm -hmm. in the canvas, yeah. actually. Yeah, and your eye just keeps yeah, popping back to it again and again. It's quite intriguing because, in a way, it looks as if it might have been a servant girl, but then you look closely and on her sleeve she's got this gold beading. And here as well, is that a necklace? Um, I think that's probably gold thread around rope that's oh. holding together her chemise. Mm. But it is, you're right, it's a really uh, elaborate looking outfit, it really. Um, but it's probably from Rembrandt's dressing up box. He had costumes galore and he would dress up his sitters in different fanciful clothes to suit his paintings. So this doesn't necessarily act as a way in to understand who she is. Oh, I see. So it's all really part of the enigma. It is. He's creating these stories. He's one of the world's greatest storytellers, yes, really. Yes, he is. But there is very much a sense that Rembrandt's characters have human flaws. Yes. Don't you think, even in the painting? I mean, yes. This looks like really beautiful skin, but when you get close up to it, you'll see firstly that she's got a bit of a suntan. Oh, yes. So she is paler <laughs> yes. there than she is there. So yeah. the, the um, shirts that she normally wears stop about there on her arm. Oh, yes. But also, something we've only discovered recently there are, can you see, little pink 
spots oh, yes. on her arm. How fascinating. Oh, we think they're mosquito bites. No. Yes. Really? So <laughs> they were plagued even then. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> Absolute nightmare. You can never get away from mosquitoes, no. even in the 17th century. Yes, but that all adds to her really human character. Doesn't it? And the just fact that she's a real person. Just, she is absolutely real. One of the early owners of this painting, the 18th century French collector Roger de Peel, claimed that when Rembrandt hung this painting in his window, it was so realistic that passers-by waved up at her. Mm -hmm.